In this presentation, we'll look at yet still more weather statistics. We'll look at histograms, skewness, kurtosis, and the descriptive statistics that are available in the analytic tool pack add-in. Once again, we're using the data from Weather Underground. It is for the city of Philadelphia, the month of July 2020, and we'll be focusing on the maximum temperature of each day for the, all the days in July. We're going to make a histogram of the high temperature data. That's in column B, B3 to colon B33. Highlight that data and then go on the menu to insert. And then in the chart region, find the statistical chart icon. And then under that, choose histogram. To understand the concept of a histogram, we have to come to terms with the idea of bin and frequency. So in our data, we had a range of temperatures from 77 to 97. And then we can take this range of data and break it up into sub-ranges. Let's say 75 to 80, 80 to 85, 85 to 90, and so on. These sub-ranges are what we call the bins. Then the frequency is the number of times that the, the data points, the temperatures, fell into each bin. So it is the number of occurrences. So the number of times the temperature was between 80 and 85. And then you have to be careful about, you know, is 80 in this bin or was it in the previous bin? And then when you finally have your bins decided and the frequencies decided, then you make a plot and with the bins on the x-axis and the frequencies on the y-axis. And this is what we call a histogram. Toward our design of the histogram, we're going to choose quick layout number three. So make sure the histogram is highlighted and then the uh, chart related options will be available on the menu. So we can see at the top in the middle chart design and then we can go over to the left and see the quick layout drop down list and from the list we are choosing layout number three. First off, I edited the title of the histogram. Now, Excel decides automatically the bins, it picks bins for me, but if I want to have maybe some input in the, the bin, I can right click on the X axis and choose format axis. On the format axis pane that pulls out from the right hand side, I can control the width of the bin and here I'm choosing it to have a width of four. So each bin would span four degrees of temperature. Or another way I can control the bins is to control the number of bins. So if I choose the radio button in front of number of bins and then use the text box to the, to the right, I can choose how many uh, bins I want. And in this case, I've chosen seven. This is typical of a histogram. The bins in the middle, in the central region, have a higher uh, frequency, are, are higher in the histogram. And then the, on the ends, on both ends, it tends to, be, to fall off and have smaller frequencies there. These, these end points with smaller frequencies are known as the tails. We can see in this example that the high temperature has a very small tail whereas in, on the low temperature side, it is more spread out and, has, and therefore has a, a longer tail. And the point that we're making here is that it has an asymmetric tail, that the, that the left-hand side and the right-hand side are not similarly spread out. A histogram or a distribution that is sort of unequal in its side, the, the left-hand side is not sort of a mirror image of the right-hand side, is asymmetric or it's also said to be skewed and then we will introduce a a quantity known as the skewness that will be a measure of a distribution's asymmetry how skewed is it so here in cell b45 we happen to be entering the function for skewness in excel so we are typing equals the function name SKU, S-K-E-U, open parenthesis, and then the data range, which was B3 colon B33. 
this number can be positive or negative, and that will indicate in sort of which direction it was skewed. And if it's not skewed, you will get a zero. Histograms or distributions are often compared to a normal distribution. This is an important distribution that comes up in a lot of situations. And the normal distribution has a skewness of zero. So if we see a skewness, it's a measure of being not normal, not a normal distribution, not a bell-shaped curve, not a Gaussian. These are all different terms for the same distribution, normal, bell, Gaussian. There are other ways to be different from the normal distribution other than just being skewed or not. The normal distribution, again, the normal or Bell or Gaussian distribution, all different names for the same thing, falls off in a certain way from, this, from its central point. And if you fall off sort of faster or slower than this, uh, then you are not normal. And a measure of that is known as the kurtosis. In Excel, there is a function for that. So down in B46, we are entering the formula for that in Excel, equal KURT, K-U-R-T, open parenthesis, and then the data range B3 colon B33, close parenthesis, and enter. And this, again, is a measure of whether we are uh, normal or not. One can find a couple different definitions of kurtosis, but Excel uses one that is zero for the normal distribution. So then the question will become, is it positive or negative as we move away from the normal? A positive kurtosis is sort of more sharply peaked in the center, whereas a negative kurtosis means it's sort of more spread out around the center. And again, we're always comparing ourselves to the normal distribution, the Gaussian, the bell curve. Next, we'll show in Excel a way to get sort of a large group of statistical measures all at once. It uses an add-in. So if you don't already have this add-in, you would get the add-in by uh, clicking on File on the menu at the top, and then a region slides out from the left, and down at the bottom you will click Options. And then in the Options dialog box that arises, you will click on Add-in, sort of on the lower left-hand side. Then you will find your add-in in the list. I've already added this add-in, so it's at the top in my active add-ins, but if you don't have it, it would be farther down on the list, but you find the analysis tool pack, add-in, and if you're adding it, then you would click the go button next. That brings up yet another dialog box, the add-ins dialog box, and then you would put a check mark next to the analysis tool pack and click OK. When the tool pack is added, then you can go to data on the menu at the top of Excel, and then over on the right, find data analysis, and then click on that. That brings up a dialog box, and then under there, we are going to choose the descriptive statistics option and click OK. Next, we have the descriptive statistics dialog box. We choose the range of data we want to have statistics of. And again, we can either type the, the data range, B3 colon B33, or we can leave this dialog box, go over to the main spreadsheet and drag through the data we want and then decide what we want. You see in the radio buttons here that we're going to put the results on a new worksheet and that I have checked off that I want summary statistics and then I'm going to click OK. And we see here the results. We have our summary statistics. They are on a new sheet, sheet one as requested. And then the it sort of summarizes a bunch of statistics that we already know, say the mean and in row five, the median and the mode, standard deviation, things we've gotten before, and our new quantities, it also includes our new quantities, the kurtosis and the skewness. The kurtosis is a measure of, is it peaked or not? Is it is it more peaked, more sharply peaked or less sharply peaked compared to the normal distribution or the skewness? Is it sort of, is there a long, longer tail on one side or the other? And it's nice, especially if you're going to have a number of sheets, to not 
work with Excel's default names of, say, sheet one, sheet two, but to rename the sheet. So down there on the name of the sheet, sheet one, I have I right click and then from the context sensitive menu, choose rename. And then that allow us to type down there in that region. And I've decided to call it stats.